These are the AI guardrails you've been looking for. Wow. I agree with that statement. And I like the road. I'm Jim Rivas with Cloud Security Alliance. And I recorded this video short to talk to you about what we think is one of the most significant announcements we've made at CSA in our over 16 year history the AI controls matrix. I'm gonna just go over a few highlights and give you the information to download it, and I hope you enjoy it. Well, let's dive right into this. So first off, let's just talk about what it is. So the AI controls matrix, first and foremost, it's the product of a lot of effort by over a hundred volunteers over close to a year's time. And it's a both technical and operational framework of controls to help organizations manage artificial intelligence in a secure and safe way. And there you can see the download link. We encourage you to go take a look at it and let us know. So the control matrix itself has 18 domains. It's got a new model security domain, and it's got 243 controls. It was derived from the cloud controls matrix, which made a lot of sense because the delivery of AI is really done through the cloud. It's orchestrated that way. Even what we're finding is with small models and edge models that that seems to be the case. It's very cloud like. So when we characterize the controls, we try to evaluate and determine, is this really specific to the AI portion, the cloud portion, to give you that sort of guidance on where to focus your efforts. So one of the important areas that really sets the AI controls matrix apart from other standards and efforts out there is the shared security responsibility. So we've tried to articulate that very carefully and these are just examples and different terms can be used, but the, the cloud portion, the AI model itself, the orchestration, such as the ML ops training pipeline, the applications, whether they're coming from enterprises, building them for themselves or SaaS applications, everyone has an important role and certain controls apply to all of them and certain controls apply to separate of these stakeholders. So it's important to understand that. We think it's a very useful, one of the most useful parts of this. Another area that I took a screenshot of is this life cycle area that helps you understand for a control from the beginning to the end, from the initial development to the service retirement, how that really applies to you know, specific controls from an AI perspective. Threat categories is another area, and if you've been following our AI safety initiative and all of the research, and definitely you should, we've done LLM threat taxonomies, and what we've tried to do here is to help you understand that the threat categories that we have will a specific control, if it's not implemented properly, be at risk to that specific action. And then you can just see what, what we have here. And we've done this across all of these 243 controls. Mappings is a very important part of what we do. And you can also find this in what you download. So there's a few different things are out there that people talk about with AI. And here's an example of the NIST AI risk management framework. You also hear a lot about the ISO 42001, which is the AI management system from ISO. You hear about ISO 27001, the security uh, ISMS uh, portion. You hear things like the EU AI Act and, and other areas and, and national standards. What we try to do is to do these mappings to essentially get you both the best of both worlds and be able to use other bodies of work out there and get the added context of our very complete organizational control. So NIST is a really good example where there's a lot of rich information about the considerations for performing risk management in AI. However, it does not include the full 
operationalizing controls and all the information you need to go from beginning to end to implement this. And so it's a great sort of combination. And by these mappings, you can see where you have to be thinking about to, from one of these standards to another, where you think about using it to apply to a specific issue. And so you take something like the uh, AI management framework from ISO 42001, it is not uh, security and safety specific. And so it's a, a great mapping that we have with that, it provides it a lot of really rich information. And ISO 27001, the information security management system, it's not AI specific. So again, it's a good combination. So I encourage you to use the mappings, it saves you a lot of time. So uh, another thing that we've implemented hearkening back to our cloud deliverables is the AI cake self-assessment. So this is a screenshot showing on the left, the AI CM controls, and then the assessment questions that match that, that you could go ask yourself, or you could ask the other stakeholders in that shared responsibility. So where are we going from here? Well, again, I want to thank everyone who's been part of this journey to create this. We're going to do what you need by extending this. We, we think that we can do more in like highlighting some of these very um, important, even catastrophic risks and, and look at the controls that can best deal with that. We have developed something called Star Validated, which is actually using AI to do some of the assessment audit activities and score some of the different assessment material that's out there. So we'll apply that to this. Ultimately, this is gonna be part of our STAR for AI where we've extended our STAR program to actually do the certification and assurance for AI systems just as we have for cloud. So it's gonna be an interesting journey and we thank everyone who's participated and we'd really love to hear from you about what you think about it. So go get it, go download it and use the controls. Thank you.